I got to admit, I'm pretty proud of this one. Illustrations by Pete. So I am one of those people that I find a sketchbook based on the paper. It's not always about the binding. Sometimes I'm, I like the regular bound books with the regular, you just open it up, it lays flat, it's very nice to work across. Other times I like the bound, the wire bound sketchbooks because you can flip them over and hold them, they're kind of sturdy. And that's just something that I like. So here's what the secret to having the perfect sketchbook to me is the paper that's in it, not necessarily the binding. I could go either way with the binding. It, that's okay with me. Some people don't like that. They have to have one or the other. I'm okay with it. As long as the page is big enough. If I have the wire binding, I like the bigger page because then you can go and do a bigger piece. But if you have just the regular binding, you can go across the gutter and do the whole page. Sometimes that looks nice and I get that and, and I like that sometimes. But I like to have sketchbooks where what's in it, the paper, is the star. So I made one. You get these these coils. You have a machine. This is the Zutter Bind It All 2, I think it is. So this is it here. You, you put the paper in here. You see it has a little spacing for where the holes go. And then you clamp it down. It's not difficult to learn to use. You do have to figure out where to put each notch, both for the cover and for the pages, it's different. So, but there's a little piece, this thing here that tells you what size wire and how big to make the spacing. And then you put the wire in here with the paper and when you crunch it down, it closes it on it and makes it a sketchbook. It's very nice. It's an investment, it was like 50 bucks. It has a little back pull out thing so when you push on it, you don't tip the thing over. I made that mistake several times, go to hit the thing and it just flies everywhere. But like I said, $50 investment, it wasn't bad. I don't know if they make this one, but they make similar things on Amazon all the time. I'll put links, if I could find one, I'll put a link there. So I'm proud of this sketchbook. I put three different papers in here, all that I wanted to try, but I just, I didn't want to make a book of each one. I didn't want to work through the pads. I wanted it in a book so I can reflect back at it. And this is all hot press paper. So I used the Fluid 100, I used the Legion uh, Stonehenge, and I also used some arches in the back just as a reference because I was used to using that one for so long. So, so let's flip through this and see what I did with it. I made a mess of it. I was doing a lot of experimentation in here. It was the first time I had the Legion Hot Press and the Fluid 100 watercolor paper, so I had to figure it out, and that's what I did. So all I did for the covers, back, front and back, was take this mixed media artboard. They're very thick and they're very sturdy and solid. And I took the lid from the Fluid 100, it was a block, and I glued it on that, and then on the back, I just left it, and you can see, that's exactly what it is. So I punch the holes in it, front and back, so it's sturdy. It's very rigid if you go to draw on it. It doesn't really flex much. It'll flex a little bit, but not much. So I chose the Fluid 100 Hot Press because I wanted to try it because a lot of botanical artists really like this. So I believe it was Lizzie Harper, who put, and I'm gonna put her link down below. If you've never watched her, she's an amazing botanical artist. She does other things too. But she compares these watercolor papers and for the way she uses it, this was her number one pick. This is going maybe going back a couple of years, but this was her number one pick because you can lay the color down. She likes to lay the details in first and then wash over with the color. Not a lot of watercolor artists do that. She does, and this paper will do that. So I started out just with a simple line and wash landscape looking thing and I tested that out I put a lot of detail in here and then went over with a wash and it did exactly what she said it held most of that color and I went back in with a marker because that's what I was doing line and wash here so this I did in all three different papers to see how it would work and how it would come out that's actually very important is a very important lesson here so I did this here and then I also did it in the Legion Stonehenge Aqua. So I did not do it with the Archer. So I only did it with the two. It was these two and so different. I want you to look here. 
When I laid in the wash here and then put the color down, it absorbed much quicker and stuck and held in place. So you could see a lot of hard edges. This whole thing is hard edges. A lot here, there's a lot of hard edges in here. So when I put the paint, the, the color down, it sucks in, absorbs it, and sticks. And then you can glaze over it. So this is good paper for glazing. You can glaze over, it won't move what's underneath. And that's important to know that when you're looking at watercolor paper. This paper was the exact opposite. You see how soft it is. I laid the color in, it sat on top for a while and spread and bloomed and kind of just sat there. And so it absorbed, it was a very soft effect of that sky. Uh, same thing in here, I had a very hard time. I was trying to get harder edges. You can see I went in with some ink to define some edges, but there's not a lot of hard edges in here. There is a little bit over here. I put the paint on a little thicker. Even down here, no hard edges. As I put it in, I went to glaze over it. It just moved everything under it. So it's just very specific to what paper you're using. You have to know the properties of your paper. So I really think this is the key to finding the perfect sketchbook is understanding your paper. Figure out what you like and put it into a sketchbook. Make one. I know it's an investment. It's about 50 bucks or it could be more now. Maybe it's like... 70 bucks or something like that to get one of those machines is worth it because you can from then on you can make whatever kind of sketchbook you want with the whatever paper you want the perfect kind for you so i'm going to flip through this and just go through what i did in this book so this was inspired by a daniel potvin uh portrait that he did it's it's just like a cartoon portrait i really love his drawing i'm gonna put a link to his channel too I don't think he uploads much anymore, but his art is absolutely amazing. And the thing I liked about this one was I only used two colors. I used a Payne's Blue Gray, and then I used a very light brownish color. I think it was a sepia, maybe. Very, very watered down, so you barely see it. But you can see the warm and cool tones in the same piece, and it just comes out really nice. Again, this is not an original idea. I don't even remember where I saw this. This part was an original idea. I put this on top. This is something I did. But this itself, the, this piece here was not an original one. I saw it in someone else's sketchbook and tried to mimic it a little bit. I tried to put a little bit more texture in the grass uh, and in the rock. But mostly, it's not an original. Here's another cartoon portrait. The guy almost reminds me of like having like a vulture head. He's not a nice guy. He doesn't look like a nice guy anyway. He looks like he's a little angry. He's a little weird. So with this, I was experimenting with the Tombow markers. It was the black. And I'd put the black down, and then I would just use either water or the blender marker that comes with it and put it over this. And the paper held up. It didn't tear apart. Usually watercolor markers, paper tears up. This one didn't. It did very well. I can't tell you anything about this. I'll let you look at it, but it's entirely classified. So this was a doodle I did. I think I took my nephew to the pool and I didn't want to go in. So I just sat down and started drawing. I saw this little snail looking thing to the side and I said, well, I'm going to do a doodle off of the snail. And this is what I ended up with. I don't know if you see a snail there. I don't, but it could be, maybe. I don't know. So I was attempting to do some scribble art here and figured this, I don't know where I saw this character. I saw it somewhere and I just started scribbling and making it. And uh, that's what I ended up with. This is the exact same story. Started with some scribble art. Wanted to make it a little bit darker, have a little bit more contrast in it. So that's how I built it. But the concept itself was I saw somewhere else. It's not original. Okay, now we're going to get into the Stonehenge Aqua Hot Press. It's very good paper. Works very well, and I really enjoy this paper. Sorry to showed you this, but just again, to go over it, it blended very smoothly. This is the Hot Press, so it's you should have hard edges, and it doesn't. It just blended very seamlessly across the whole thing. I don't know where I came up with this. I was just doodling and put in a lot of different concepts all in the same piece. I actually really like this. It scared me a little bit because it was almost like this could be a building that someone built that you're walking in over here. 
and this weird little goat head appeared and it's a little freaky to even to me and I'm the one who drew it I really like the way this piece right here came out this little section right here I did the stippling in the corners and then just kind of did little uh, arcs into the center with a circle kind of make it look like an eyeball but it doesn't at the same time it, it's kind of interesting and I really enjoy all the little detail I put in here that comes out to this eye over here uh, all the stuff in here I just think it looks nice it, it came out well and the same thing goes with this here overall I just like this piece it's one of my favorites in the book so this one here nothing special I was just using fountain pens and different inks and then going over them with a water brush and watering them out so you get the color kind of splash out and see how you can make it look thick or thin or whatever that's all I was doing here I did add this little face here with the teeth coming up it looks like a tongue maybe with the bottom jaw with more teeth that kind of go top and bottom there's a little face over here there's another little face over here I don't know what exactly I was doing I was just doodling and that's what happened this is one of the first videos I put up on the channel it was the moon man t1 versus the black forest pen and really it's not a versus I just use them together and I use two dye meanings for this I use the oxblood and the twilight and then because the lines are so close together when I put down the water on it just kind of watered it out and drew the color out of the ink but this is there's no other color on here that's all it is I believe this is the Aurora Borealis from Diamine. So these are all three Diamine inks. Then I was happy with it. It was an October piece, and I think it was during Inktober for some reason. And I just did this. I like this. This is just a scratch page. I was just trying to figure out. I did several of these types of drawings, this weird neurographic type art, and I wanted to see how I could experiment with it. So before I did the actual video on it, I just put some down here and see what happened now these are I did with the Derwent paint pens again I think it was the fall it had to be the fall and um, I just kind of splattered them around and just used them the way that they were supposed to be used just made a mess and disaster everywhere but I like how it came out it was it's not perfect it's not that great but I like it okay so this doodle is fun you've seen quite a few of these from me I've done them several times where you put down some masking fluid put a wash down peel off the masking fluid and then fill that in with color and then go over the details with ink uh, I really enjoy doing these kinds of pieces here it's just fun it takes a lot of time because there's so many details all throughout here that I want to ink out but it's a fun process I enjoy it okay this one I just I started doing something and I was done I just felt like this was done it was it so I put this little poem down here and I left a word out I was writing so quickly that I left an entire word out it stuck in my brain but never came out on the paper it says it's okay to be done when you're done so long as you've had your fun this one was tidy and small and never to be pinned up on a wall but when the day is through, just know that I made this mark just for you. And that's the word I messed up over here. This one was tidy and small. And never to be pinned up on a wall. I didn't put the two in there. I messed that up. So not just mess up in art and drawing. You can also mess up when you're writing. That's just something that I find interesting. But I actually liked it. It's very small. It's a very small piece. I was gonna fill up the whole page when I started this but I like the way it came out and I'm, I'm happy with it so this was a fun piece I enjoyed this um, this one I, it's I messed up because I put a lot of black space in here but this is really the main focus right in here it's this piece here and everything else was just extra that I threw in around it and then I filled it in with all the black ink and you kind of lose the piece but in the background so I probably shouldn't have done that I probably should have done something else maybe make the background blue or something else so you can see that stick out but it's okay it came out the way I wanted it to as far as the actual individual piece here yeah I like it this is one you've seen more recently I really like this piece I like doing these I enjoy doing color 
wrap around color with other color like wrap shapes around other shapes then put in some detail with some ink I enjoy this kind of thing I hope you do because I love producing these so I'm gonna do a lot of these in the future as well and this is just something I enjoy okay so this was the matte pencils and I absolutely love them it there's no glare on this I think no matter what I do to move this I don't think you'll see any glare on it it's just it's a nice piece I really like it I love this piece and I usually hate pencil let me show you what happens there's almost no smearing on here you can see the graphite clearly if I was going to put another piece here you would see the graphite but you it's not as bad as it usually is and I think it's because in this spiral book I know the pages slide around more in spiral books than they do in regular binding but it just it's okay it's not terrible and here we've come to the arches I only put a couple of sheets in here just to test it against the other pages and here's what I did so this is the weird hawk jellyfish the thing it's the most poisonous creature to ever exist look it up on Discovery Channel you'll see all about this thing the hawk jellyfish it'll it just flies around it's not in this area so it's only in very remote areas of the world where no one has ever photographed one but but they tell you all about it and I just drew a picture of it I've seen one of these things so this was just ink and then I it's water soluble ink so I used the water brush and got some color out of it and tried to leave as much as I can with the contrast too so it doesn't overpower it I think it came out well this I was just trying to see if I can use paint the same way that someone would use markers and you know when people use like the grayscale markers they start off with the light then they go into the darker and darker and darker well I did that but in a doodle a weird swirly noodle doodle I don't know what it is but I put in a ton of extra details and things but not so much that it took me weeks to do I could have probably spent a week on this putting in more detail I didn't I left it where it is here there's enough for me so I like it now I'll probably do some more well that's it that's the end of the book so I encourage you to build your own book I think it's important if you're happy with the paper that's in your sketchbook you're gonna create more and create better if you're constantly fighting against the paper in your book you're not gonna create well I did this to learn how to use each individual paper the way it's supposed to be used. I love how different papers have different characteristics that you can use and it just it makes the art more interesting so long as you use it the right way. Don't fight against it. Figure out how it's supposed to be used and use it that way. I think that's the best advice I can give you for a watercolor paper and if you put the paper that you want in your book you're not gonna fight against it you'll make a book that you want and you'll just move forward with that I'm gonna show you a couple other ones so this is one that I did this is a book I did here has the Canson Heritage hot press in it and I'm gonna use this book this is my next hot press book to use and again I just put the board on the outside and then the paper on the inside I made it a little bit smaller so I can do a little bit smaller things and get it done in one sitting that's fine I haven't used this paper a lot so I'm gonna I guess experiment with it and discover what the paper can do in this book now the best things about doing this is you can make books that don't exist so this here is the Strathmore this is the heavy-duty mixed-media tone series the tone gray and the tone blue and then I just painted this black and just taped these on or glued these on I think I might have used the liquid matte medium from the acrylic liquid matte medium to put these on so every other page I just did there's a blue and there's a gray and so I just put every other page blue and gray and I created my own book that doesn't even exist here's another one that doesn't exist this is sanded paper I believe it's the art fix paper and it's all sanded and there's some tone paper in here some black paper 
you know, other colors and white, but they're sanded. So I can use this colored pencil or I can do pastel work in here. It holds up. It's going to hold up well. It's because it's that's what it is. It's the right kind of paper. But that's what this is, sanded paper. And so you can create books that you may want that you can't find out in the market and make it yourself and put it together and use it. It becomes very inspiring when you can do something like that. So thumbs up the video if you found this information useful. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you're going to go and make your own book. I would really love to see that. Some people just fold it and then they actually do the sewing thing. I do not have patience for that. I don't think I could handle that. This is about all the patience I have and it's fine. It works. Uh, this doesn't, I know it doesn't seem like it should stick together well, but really when this is bound, the paper doesn't come out. Even on the seam, it just doesn't come out. It stays fine right there. That's where it comes together. I don't know if you can see that, but I'll pull it up. Yeah, you can see it right there. So, you know, but it doesn't, you can push it together. It, it stays, it's, it's fine. You put it inside the cover so it's not on the back. It works out well. That's about it for me. I'm gonna go and I'll see you in the next one.